We got cantaloupe, honeydew, and watermelon. They're three individuals. They form Melon Limited Liability Partnership to engage in the melon seed design and manufacturing business. Before forming this partnership, they each had their own sole proprietorship. They each contribute the following property in exchange for equal one-third interests in the partnership capital, profits, and losses. So all three of those are one-third. So Cantaloupe contributes land, which is a capital asset in the hands of Cantaloupe, acquired several years ago, worth $100 and has a basis to Cantaloupe of $40. Honeydew contributes machinery with a basis of $25 and a value of $60 plus $40 in cash. Now Honeydew purchased the machinery several years ago for $75 and has taken $50 of depreciation. Watermelon contributes inventory with a value of $100 in which watermelon has a basis of 90. What are the tax consequences to each partner and the partnership on formation? Also consider any potential future issues with respect to these transactions on the partners or the partnership. Okay, so this question is a very big problem, comprehensive. You need to go through and address all the various issues. The best way to do this is to think about all the parties in the problem as well as consider creating a balance sheet. In partnership tax, balance sheets are really important, okay? Because it's important to keep track of your tax and your book numbers, all that good stuff. So I always start with the partnership. In a formation problem or contribution problem, always start with the partnership. And the reason why is because it's the easiest. So with respect to the partnership, under section 721, the partnership has no gain or loss recognized. Why? Because the partnership is giving up partnership interest, right? One third, one third, one third, and getting property, right? All this is property, right? We've got land, we've got machinery, we've got cash, and we've got inventory, all considered property. So partnership has no gain or loss. Now, we're gonna have to determine the adjusted basis of all assets. I'm gonna say for the adjusted basis, C balance sheet. B slash S for balance sheet in this class, okay? Now, remember, when determining the basis, section 723 applies. I'm gonna note that here, and it's simply gonna be carryover basis. Easy, right? Carry your basis. Finally, the last thing that you want to note is that all property tax. Exactly. So look here. For the land, it was acquired several years ago. Bam! As soon as the partnership gets it, it's immediately long term. So if the partnership holds it as capital and it's got gain potential, it's going to be long term capital gain. The machinery obviously has been held for more than a year. I mean, as you're told, it was held for or purchased several years ago. Um, but even so, you know depreciation has been taken on it, so most likely, unless it's bonus depreciation, it's been held for more, year, more, more than one year. Inventory, inventory is always ordinary asset. I mean, it might not be inventory to, to the partnership. We'll talk about that issue in a moment and how that goes over for five years. So the partnership, we just determined the consequences there. All right, is it okay if we uh, abbreviate these C, H, and W? Okay, so let's talk about C's consequences. So C is giving up land for a one-third interest, section 721. I'm not even going to um, write it again. Section 721, I'll just put it here for the partnership. 721 means no gain or loss. And by the way, if you're doing one of my exams and you say something um, for one party that applies to another party, you can draw arrows, show it, whatever makes it more efficient for you. If you want to put a note again on your reference sheet and put A is and you want to state the proposition, 721 means no gain or loss recognized by partner or partnership, and then you want to you know, box that and then put A, and then anytime you have A, make it clear that, okay, A by itself and put a box around A applies here, that, that's fine too. I, it's just as long as I can see that you understand the concepts. Or we can just write it out for each one, whatever you prefer. So C is cantaloupe, 721 applies. No gain or loss recognized to cantaloupe. By the way, you might be wondering, this is a property transaction. I always thought for property transactions, we calculate the realized gain or loss. You're right. Whenever you do property transactions, we always start with realized gain or loss, then we do recognized gain or loss. But for partnerships, if they don't receive anything 
other than partnership interest, it's always going to be no gain or loss recognized. You don't got to do re um, realize gain or loss. You do have to do realize gain or loss, though, when you have boot and those types of things. So that's why I'm not calculating the realized gain or loss here. Okay? Just so you know. If you want to know, I'll just go ahead and tell you the realized gain or loss for cantaloupe is 60, for honeydew is 35, and for watermelon is 20. I'm sorry, 10. My apologies, 10. Okay? I'll put that, um, put that right now. So if you went through and calculated the realized gain or loss for the parties for cantaloupe, honeydew, and watermelon, you would get 60 for C, you would get 35 for honeydew, H, and you would get 10 for watermelon if you calculated the realized gain or loss. But we jump right to recognize gain or loss. And on my exam, that's fine. You can jump right to recognize gain or loss because that's what matters. But I was trying to be more proper there. Especially for those of you watch, out there watching that are taking law school classes where you're Professor probably just marked you incorrect on the whole problem. So cantaloupe, no gain or loss recognized. We also have to deter determine the adjusted basis of cantaloupe's partnership interest. So it's carryover under section 722. We carry it over, okay? So the adjusted basis for Canada's partnership interest, we just roll over the $40. Finally, the last question is, does Cantaloupe get a tack on to Canada's partnership interest? And the answer is yes. I'll just say tax. And exactly right. It's because Cantaloupe contributes land. It's a capital asset, which was acquired several years ago, remember? Tacking occurs for capital assets, section 1231 assets, and therefore we get the tack on, it's automatically going to be considered long term. Boom, like that. Okay. Honeydew, section 721 also applies, right? Giving up cash and machinery. Um, the adjusted basis of Honeydew's partnership interest. Under section 722 again. This one, we have two pieces of property. You gotta be careful. You got $40 in cash, that's the basis of cash, and you've got $25 in machinery, so honeydew's basis will be 65. Now for this one, so for this one, for tacking, the answer is gonna be split. We can also have what's called a split holding period. Now here's where there's a little gray area. In the regs, you can allocate, there's argument to allocate, to split the holding period based on fair market value, and there's argument to split it based on uh, adjusted bases. Good arguments for both. I've seen it done both ways, usually fair market value. Some cases though, you do basis, usually when it's lost property. Um, here's the issue, cash is always fresh start. Machinery, Using your business for more than a year is section 1231. However, part of it is section 1245. So rather than go through the analysis here, it would take a while, it's just gonna be split holding period. For my exam, as long as you identify it's a split holding period as well, and you explain why, because some of the property is, you explain what portions are what, I'm good. Does everyone see why it's split? Okay. Okay, so now we've got watermelon. Watermelon, also section 721, no gain or loss recognized. The adjusted basis, it's going to say partnership interest, roll that over. It's going to be the $90. We carry that right over. This one's going to be a fresh start. It's inventory. It's inventory. Okay, so those are the basics, right? We've got 721, 722. Got 723. By the way, the rules for tacking are found in section 1223 and the regs in 1223, 1.1223-1 in there. So that's where the references are there. Um, now what I want to do is I want to draw out a balance sheet. And, the, and that's not the last thing we're going to do. The last thing we're going to do is go back and highlight some issues because the question asks, asks us to know any potential future issues. All right, a balance sheet. So those of you watching this, 
You might have never seen a balance sheet before, but it's not that bad. Other people, this is probably second nature. So balance sheet, as it suggests, it balances. So we've got assets on the left, and we've got liabilities, which this problem has none, and the capital accounts or owner's equity. So what we're going to do is we're going to create some columns to, re to reflect the tax basis in the book. So we just say basis and book, and we also do the same thing with liabilities are zero. Actually, this one we call tax, my apologies. With the capital accounts. So for the assets, there's only four assets here, right? We've got cash, we've got machinery, inventory, my apologies. We've got machinery, we've got land. So the basis in each of these, and that's what this is where we find section or uh, where we get our 723 for the partnership. So the partnership basis, right, 723 in each of these assets, that's actually going to be reflected here. So cash is just going to be the face value. Inventory just rolls over. Boom, 90. Machinery, we take the $25 basis, and land, we take the $40 basis. We add all those together, we get 195. Book is going to be the fair market values. Obviously, cash equals 40. Inventory, 100. Machinery is 60. And land is going to be uh, 100. And that gives us 300. No liabilities. Now we go to the capital accounts. So, oops, my apologies. We've got cantaloupe, honeydew, and watermelon. As long as there's no capital loss, or there's no lost property involved in the problem, which there's none here. At formation, the tax capital accounts will equal the basis in the partnership interest, the 40, 65, and 90. So we got 40, 65, and 90. And look at this. That equals 195. So they equal. Book, this one you determine, okay, you look at the business. Assets minus liabilities. The fair market or the book amount of the assets are 300 minus liabilities is zero. So this is going to equal 300. They each have one third. Therefore, 100, 100, 100. You can also see that they're, getting, they're giving up $300 of value and getting $100 worth of partnership interest. That's what the value is at the formation. So that is the balance sheet. And again, 723 is referred to reference there and determining those consequences. We are not done though. We are not done because I want to highlight a few important issues that we saw in this uh, on the formation and contribution issues. The first thing, let's look at C. C contributes land, a capital asset several years ago worth $100. Does C have anything, anything to note with respect to the transaction? The answer is no. If C contributed capital loss property, it would be important to note that for five years, it would continue to be capital loss. But this is actually capital gain property to C. Everyone see that? Right? I'm talking about 724 issues, things like that. What about Honeydew? Yes, Honeydew does have an issue. The machinery. The machinery has a basis of 25 and a value of 60. What does that mean? That means that $35 of depreciation has been taken, right? Oh, I'm sorry. My apologies. Yeah, $50 of appreciation. You're right. The difference between the $75, the original cost, I was looking at the wrong number, and the $75 is $50. There's been $50 of depreciation taken, right? So the lesser of, if there was realized gain on that transaction, which would be $35 or $50, would be viewed as Section 1245. So guess what? $35 sticks with the machinery. So I'm going to put a little X there, a little X asterisk. Actually, we'll do a, a little A. The machinery, sorry, there we go. Little A. So basically what it's saying is that, hey, the partnership has to keep, in, keep track of that amount going forward. If they sell it, guess what? They have, they have to record ordinary income for depreciation recapture of that amount, that $35 going forward. That's still 
goes along with the asset itself. Also important to note is that, so I'll put this under B, is that the partnership steps into the shoes. I believe that's found in the regulations in 1.167, the 167, uh, Code Section 167, the regs there, 160, yeah, I think it's 167. A partnership steps into the shoes of the partner, so we continue to depreciate, you know, it's been depreciated down to 25, so we go from 25 down, okay? That's the point, down to zero. We don't start over using 25 and then, you know, do six more years because it's probably a five-year asset for machinery. Um, we, go, we continue to go down. Okay. We also, so that's, what's, that's what you can see from Honeydew's issue. Um, that's item B. So we have A, B. Watermelon. Does watermelon have anything interesting to note? Yes. Inventory. So watermelon in the hands. So we're going to have to note that. Item C. Again, sorry. C. Item C. The inventory by watermelon in the hands of watermelon is inventory. And that way, for five years or less, actually five or fewer, my apologies, five or fewer years, if sold, regardless how the partnership holds, will be treated as ordinary. That's under section 724. 724. By the way, going back to the uh, depreciation recapture and item A, that unrealized receivable I mentioned in section 724, that actually applies to unrealized receivable for also applies to depreciation recapture. We're gonna learn later on the, in, the, in a later problem in the course that guess what? Unrealized receivable isn't just receivable, it also applies to depreciation recapture. So it also triggers that as well. It keeps, that's actually the, the triggering rule. You actually find that in um, 724 with unrealized receivables because the depreciation recapture is characterized as that. So those are really the elements um, to note. Again, we went through tacking for all the parties. Um, we're not gonna look at the pre-contribution gain or loss aspects in 704C. We'll see that in later problems, but that's really everything. Again, note that um, the various code sections that apply throughout the problem, very important. Before we go, I wanna note that the depreciation recapture, the $35 that we calculated right here, um, what would happen if you know, the, the property were sold later by the partnership? So again, that $35 goes along with the ride with the actual machinery. If it was sold, let's say that you know, the next day the partnership sells it for um, the value is 60, sells it for 60, just unrealistically, we'll just say they get the fair market value in cash. And they use the base of 25, they have a $35 gain, right? It all gets allocated to, all 35 gets allocated to partner H, Honeydew, the one that contributed it. And again, it retains that 1245 ordinary income recapture, not something else because the partnership now has it. Those are two separate rules that come into effect. The first one is, as we mentioned, uh, section 724 unrealized receivable says, hey, Regardless how far, it doesn't even matter five years, 10 years, 20 years, that uh, depreciation recapture continues to go with it. That $35 continues to go with it. Also is section 704C. 704C, which we'll talk about in a later problem, that out would allocate that specific pre-contribution gain from that item to Honeydew. Anything beyond that would be allocated differently, but that $35 that's, that's there in that item would actually go to Honeydew and it will retain that same character. So I hope, I hope that helps you understand.